Aloha, I'm Susan Lors, the founder and program director of Hawaii Fido Service Dogs. This is Lauren Lasher and our program dog, Zoe. Lauren is our educational outreach specialist. And this is Joette and her dog in training, Luca, who is nine months old. And we would like to share some training tips that we do with our dogs that you can also do with your pets at home. I do want to say that part of our mission, besides training and cer uh, certifying uh, specific service dogs, is to share this information with the public and educate them on the rights and the roles of service dogs in Hawaii. So Lauren, would you like to talk a little bit about um, Zoe? All right, well, Zoe's a real special dog and uh, I've been an educator myself and I'm a big fan of training and have worked training with her. Uh, the very first thing you could see what she's doing that I trained her to do is a thing that I call maka. So I'd point to my eye and say maka and so that she starts to uh, develop a relationship with me where she's paying attention. And then from that point, I would do all sorts of training. But before we get into it, do you want to talk about how we train our philosophy of training and what we do? We do. So let me first start out is we start with our own puppies. We breed our own puppies. We use specific working breeds. So we know we have a successful dog. Uh, they're health tested and DNA tested. So we start with the best. And at three days old, they are starting with neurological stimulation exercises. At 13 days old, when their eyes and ears start opening, we do other exercises, bring in toys, textures, noise. And as they get older from uh, week three to 12, we do a whole program of uh, puppy interaction, of agility, problem solving, and eye contact. So by that time, they are crate trained, toilet trained, and have five or six commands under their belt. It is always done with positive reinforcement. We never use any harsh methods because if you have a dog that needs that type of training, it is not a service dog material. Uh, we want a dog that works out of love. We want a dog that has a working ethic and that is very mellow and social. So Luca here at nine months old is a labradoodle and honest, he is a rascal. He's been very good because one, he is in a vest and he knows he's working, but two, Joette has been working with him every single day uh, since she's gotten him as a puppy at 12 weeks old on that. So Joette's gonna show some basic obedience training that our dogs get, and this is something that all dogs should be able to do out in the community. She will be using both verbal and hand signals. Before we start, all trainers, all of our trainers, always have two things in their pocket. They are our poop bags, because we are responsible people out in the community, and we always have treats. So he doesn't know who to look at because we both have treats. But a treat doesn't always have to be food. It could be a toy. It could be a good girl. It could be an ear rub and a hug. It's just something positive because we want our dogs to work because they want to work. They are dogs first. They have a lot of fun. They have a lot of free time. They get a lot of exercise. But when they put on that vest and they're working for their handler, that attention needs to be on these folks over here. So some basic things. Would you show us some sure. basic things that Luca can do? Sure. Come here, Luca. Luca, Luca, Luca. Luca, sit. Good boy. Luca, stay. Luca, front. Sit. Good boy. Luca, around. And place. And sit. Yay, good boy. Good dog, here you go. Always the eye contact. All right, you look at that? heel yeah. and front. Come on, pay attention. And side. All right. And Luca, between. Between. Stay. Between. Good boy. Stay. This is one of our, our serve, uh, PTS skills is a calming effect where the dog comes between the, the legs, stays there, yeah. and it's also for those folks who don't want people to approach him. 
Release. Very good. And front. Set. Good job. So Joette's talking in a soft voice, very positive, and she's not repeating. Uh, Luca does know this, but we do want to give the dogs time to problem solve and figure out what's going on yeah. on that. Luca, stay. Brace. Good boy. And around. Come around. Because he's young, we and can't sit. do full bracing, but he's just getting the experience of feeling pressure on the body, associating the word with the action on that. That was very good, Luca. So Luca has been doing this since he's 12 weeks old. He will continue doing these basics because training is forever. But then we will start adding some service dog skills. He's got this in the house. He's got this in certain buildings. Now he has to be able to do this out in the community with distractions. You want to try it? Yep, let's try it. Let's Luca. see what he can do. Luca, let's try first to get it. Luca, look, keys. Luca, get it. Hold, give, good boy. So this is plastic and metal. Dogs don't like plastic Luca. and metal. Stay. Luca, get it, get the keys, pick it up. Get it, get it, get it, good. Bring, hold, get it, good boy, hold, give. Oh, great. Good nice. job. So when they're puppies in their pens, we have all sorts of things, keys, spoons, uh, cans, uh, metal object, toys that make noises. So picking this up now is nothing foreign to him. He, he doesn't mind that in his mouth, but getting the keys and bringing them and we're in a, a place he's never been before, that was, that's very good. I'm impressed, Luca. <laughs> So from Luca's skills, then we would go on to our service dog skills. And then Lauren's just going to show a couple of what some of our dogs do and maybe things that you could do out in the community with you. Okay. I'd like to add a few things, though, before I get into it. One of the things that's really significant is when you're training a dog, you really need to have a lot of patience. We, we say inch by inch, it's a cinch. By the yard, it's hard. And so what we often do, in fact, we always do, is that when you start to train a dog, you do a, a term is successive approximation. We start getting excited if the dog starts to show some inclination towards what you want them to do. So we'll, we're happy to reward and encourage movement towards a behavior. So we don't always wait until the completed task is done, but we'll work it in small increments. I think the training is really, really important. I think also, that your training treats could be simple. A lot of times people feel that they may have to go out and buy fancy kinds of dog treats. Uh, I use a small uh, little roasted milk bone. It's really, really small. Zoe doesn't care about the size. She always likes a treat. But I like to do something that's consistent and not a lot of calories because I'm training a lot. And so. you can, if your dog is not a picky eater, use their dog food. That's use their easy. Dog, the kibble yeah. is really nice. The issue about kibble, and I want to talk about it now, is kibble tends to have oil in it, whereas the milk bones are roasted and they're a little drier. So when I used to carry a pouch for the treats, I would carry uh, the kibble that I would use. Now that I put them in my pocket, I use a dry roasted treat. So I think the, as I say, train and treat anything. Another thing that I'd like to bring up, and Susan was talking about it, of exposing the animal, the dog, to a lot of different kinds of things, either walking over a ladder, walking around noise. Another thing that's really, really important that we do a lot is socialization with the dog. The dog gets a lot of socialization in its early days with other dogs and also gets socialization with a lot of people. And I think that some of those behaviors and tendencies towards socialization is really good. Another thing that we do with training, and this is one of my favorite things, is when you take a look at training, you have the command, you have the behavior, and you have the reward. So when you're training, you have a command, you have a behavior, and you have a reward. Now, sometimes those may not go all at the same time. So what you want to do is to pair them enough together. So for instance, Zoe is down right now, and what I might do, if she 
let me see if I can get her to just kind of come around. If she was walking around and she just happened to, to do something, now I'll have to tell her to do it, but I'll ask her to do it down. And when she, if she would do it naturally on her own, if she do it naturally on her own, I would then go ahead and say, down, good girl. So I'm pairing the three things together, the command, the behavior, and the reward, but it doesn't have to be all in that order. If you do it enough together, then after a while, it can go command, uh, behavior, and reward. And that's the pattern of the things. Uh, Zoe does a lot, as you could see, that she's paying attention to me. Uh, she'll do almost anything that I ask, and all of our commands are hand commands. So if I wanted her to stand up, she would do a stand up, she can go back, she could come forward, she could do a down and stay, she could do a come around like Joette does, but not, Joette, you have that so well. So Zoe's uh, a highly trained dog, she's really patient, she's really just a sweetheart. Okay, so since Zoe's a highly trained dog, we're gonna up it, and we're gonna do, ask Lauren to do a couple things and add a distraction, which will be me making a noise and a leave it. Oh, leave it. This good. is leave very it. service dog. If there's something on the ground, they should not pick it up food wise. Do they always do it? No, but let's see what we can do. And so I will well, give you a warning. All right, I'm going to add it. on to the leave it for a moment. Okay. For, there's a couple of reasons. Uh, a lot of times there's unhealthy food on the street or unhealthy food on the ground. And you want your dog to not be picking up anything. Also at home, uh, I tease a little bit that we have a three second rule that if you drop something on the floor, you, you pick it up. Well, uh, Zoe knows to give me the three seconds before she goes for things. So if something falls on the floor, and we could do it, in fact, I'll do it right now. If I go ahead and drop something on the floor, she, kn <laughs> she knows right away to, to leave it. Oh, <laughs> excuse me, that isn't what I said. I said leave it. So I could have her come to me and she'll walk around it and then go ahead back. So she, she'll do a good leave it, but she is a lab and she likes food. So uh, that, that's a big issue. But the leave it is a, is a powerful command and I think we should uh, emphasize the importance Absolutely. of it. Absolutely, it's a hard one and we work on this one forever. So, um, and then uh, the other thing is the handler doesn't always know when there's something around. So Lauren, you wanna just do a walk? I'm gonna throw this. And then the idea is the handler catches it and gives a command, hopefully. Okay, so you want me to come back and walk by? All right, all right, come here, so. Okay, you keep walking. Okay. Good girl. That's my girl. And then Good Lauren girl. will re reward that. Good girl. Good girl. How about girl. Luca? If I throw it, will he leave it? Um, if I give him the leave it command. Okay, let's should. try it just yeah. for fun. Okay. Luca, leave it. Oh, that's a hard one, but he's yeah. leaving it. So Joanne's gonna come closer no, <laughs> and keep walking. Oh, yeah. good. Excellent. Gosh. Better. And then one more and run. He's not gonna on. get it. No. But no, she no. will treat him um, come on. with another treat and reward okay. on come that on. one. So yeah. good boy. I'd like to add something else about training and then I think it's a safety issue. A lot of times, uh, dogs may not understand no or stop. And so what I've trained my dogs to do is to do a down or a sit on command. So if a car is coming by, I don't start to yell at them. I'll just go ahead and tell her to do a sit, and then the car comes by. This so very important. So you want to get behaviors that you're not telling the dog not to do something. When you're training a dog, you're training the dog to do what you want them to do. So rather than don't run, you would say sit. Or rather than don't run, you would have the dog walk. Okay. And you also notice that Luca has a training harness on his face. That is called a gentle leader. It is not a muzzle. It doesn't mean he bites. It is just a, a tool we use that guides him by his head. Because I know you've all seen those dogs out there that are yanking you and one, it's bad for you. You can fall, it hurts your shoulders, but that puts the dog in charge. So you always want to be in charge on this one. So we hope some of these tips 
are helpful and have in you folks having a well-behaved dog especially out in public and if you have any questions please feel free to go to our website just google hawaii fido service dogs and thank you for joining us aloha aloha, aloha.